Good morning, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Olivier Vitas, working at the European Space Agency at ESTEC in the Netherlands, and I am the project scientist of the JUICE mission. So JUICE is the Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, the European mission to explore the emergence of habitable worlds around gas giants. So I will make a short status report on this uh, mission to tell you where we are at the moment. And obviously, I'm giving this uh, report on behalf of all the teams uh, who work hard on these projects, so the instrument teams, the project teams at the different ESA sites, so ESOC, ESAC, and ESTEC, and the industry. And on this first slide, you can see the ESA poster of this mission, where you can see already the targets of the JUICE mission, so three icy moons, uh, Callisto, Europa, and Ganymede, and Jupiter, of course. So here is a slide on the scientific objective of the mission. We have two main themes. So the first one is to study the habitability uh, around a gas giant. And that concerns the three icy moons, so Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. And in particular, we are in very interested in the subsurface ocean inside uh, these three moons. And the second theme is the study of the Jupiter system globally in the context of the exoplanet studies, of course, but also to understand better the habitability uh, question of the three icy moons. To illustrate uh, why it is important to study uh, the moons and Jupiter at the same time, so this is an image of the Hubble Space Telescope, which shows uh, an aurora, the North Pole of Jupiter. So you see the main oval, and you can also see some uh, oral footprints of uh, some Galilean moons. So that shows the invisible link between the moons and Jupiter. So it's very important to study the moon and Jupiter together. To achieve these goals, we are building uh, the new spacecraft and the instrument. And this uh, 3D view shows you the, the spacecraft. So it's a 3D artistic uh, view. So you see the main spacecraft in the middle, you see the large solar panels. We have uh, almost 90 square meters of solar panels because we are far from the sun, we need some power. On the top, we have the optical bench uh, where we have the remote sensing instrument, so the submillimeter wave instrument. We have a laser altimeter, uh, we have uh, the camera, we have an imaging spectrometer, UV spectrometer. On the bottom, you see the 10 meter magnetometer boom where we will get we'll see the magnetic sensors and some uh, plasma sensors. We have a long uh, boom for the radar, which is called RIME. We have three smaller booms uh, for the Langmuir probe to measure plasma parameters. We, uh, we have another plasma sensor on the top, one on the bottom. We have the uh, two antennas, the high gain antenna and the medium gain antenna to be used by the radio science subsystem. So all in all, we have uh, 10 instruments. One investigation also using the um, uh, very long base interferometry network of uh, radio telescopes on Earth and the radiation monitor. At the moment, the spacecraft is being integrated. The flight model is currently in uh, Airbus Friedrichshafen in Germany. All instruments are working hard to, uh, to build, to test and to deliver the instrument to the industry. So far, we have uh, two deliveries for the industry. I will show some pictures later. Uh, the next uh, big milestone is to be ready for a thermal test at ESTEC uh, in uh, January. You may want to know how we are, we are impacted by the COVID situation. So of course, uh, the COVID situation has a negative impact uh, that has hidden some uh, margin in the schedule, but we still have one month of reserve for a launch in May 2022 uh, from Kourou with an Ariane 5 rocket. And as for any project, we have uh, studied two backup launches, one in uh, September 2022 and one in August 2023. So the mission profile is very complex and very interesting. Uh, after the launch, we have a long cruise phase of uh, seven and a half years to Jupiter. We arrive at the end of 2029 and we'll spend two and a half years around Jupiter making uh, flybys of uh, the three icy moons and you see on this animation an example of the Europa flyby at 400 kilometers, where you can see all the sequence that uh, is being studied by the science teams. So this represents the latest uh, scenarios where you see all the field of view of the instrument that will work during this, uh, this flyby. So such a flyby lasts 24 hours, and during these 24 hours of uh, measurement, 
the data that are being recorded on the spacecraft, we will need three months to get them on ground, just to tell you some of the complexity uh, of the mission. After this uh, Jupiter tour with all the flybys and the Jupiter observation, we'll end up in the Ganymede orbit for a few months, where we'll study the larger satellite of, uh, of Jupiter uh, in details from a few thousand of kilometers down to 500 and maybe 200 kilometers. In terms of uh, challenges, so this mission is very complex, very challenging, very ambitious. We have some technical challenges, the mission lifetime. Uh, it takes a lot of time to get there. And then we'll spend uh, five years or so in the Jupiter system. We have a hard radiation environment. So we have to shield the spacecraft and the instrument. The thermal uh, is a complex uh, topic because at Jupiter it's cold. And during the cruise, we pass via Venus, where it's hot, so the thermal design is uh, quite complex. The power is an issue because we are far from the sun, so even with these large solar arrays, we have only 1,000 uh, watts to, uh, to make sure all the instrument and the spacecraft is working. And we have also some strong electromagnetic requirement, which makes the, the design of the spacecraft quite uh, complex. In terms of operations, uh, the navigation is also quite challenging because there will be two orbit insertion, one around Jupiter, one around Ganymede. Uh, there will be many flybys, so in terms of uh, navigation is, uh, is uh, quite complicated. We have to address the issue of planetary protection, so we have to show that we will never impact uh, Europa, for example. And we have some uh, power and data rate constraints, so uh, not much power and not much data rate. So we have to, uh, to cope with that when we plan the, the instrument timelines. And last but not least, uh, for a mission which lasts uh, something like 30 years from the, the ID up to the end of the mission, we need to make sure that uh, we have all the information available uh, until the end of the mission and even beyond. So there is the human aspect and the knowledge management aspect. So now some uh, spacecraft images. So you see here on the left and in the middle some uh, earlier images of the spacecraft when uh, we were putting together the tanks inside the spacecraft in uh, Lempolhausen in the Iron Group in Germany. This was done at the end of last year. So you can see the, the size of the spacecraft in particular when you compare to human body in the middle. So you have the central tank in the middle and you see on the left the integration of one of the uh, propellant tank. And on the right side, you see one uh, recent uh, image of the spacecraft uh, being uh, integrated in uh, Airbus Friedrichshafen in Germany. So the spacecraft is really uh, taking shape now, waiting for the instrument to be integrated. Uh, this image shows uh, the solar arrays. So you see the, some wings of the solar arrays being assembled on the top left and on the right. And on the bottom left, you see a sequence, an illustration showing the deployment sequence, which is also quite complex uh, give, uh, given the, the shape and the size of these uh, solar arrays. And these solar arrays are being built by uh, Airbus in the Netherlands. Here you see a very recent image of the Huygen antenna of the spacecraft, so two and a half meter diameter Huygen antenna, which will be used to receive the commands and also to download all the precious uh, data for the, for the scientists. It's uh, being built by TAS uh, Industry in Italy. And finally, I indicated that we have uh, two instruments uh, delivered to the industry. So on the left, we have the UV spectrometer from uh, San Antonio in the US. So you see an image of the, of the UV spectrometer. And on the right, the radio and plasma wave instrument, which was delivered uh, not so long ago to Airbus. And so on the left, you see the search call magnetometer. On the bottom, you see an electronic box. And on the top, you see a Langmuir probe, which hits boom. So uh, in summary, the JUICE mission is proceeding uh, very well. We are all committed uh, to launch on time, and all the teams are working hard to meet uh, the tight schedule. Uh, we are on track to launch in uh, May, June 2022 from, uh, from Kourou. And if you want more information, uh, you have some indication of uh, websites, Twitter, animation, videos. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for your interest and see you soon.